Good morning, Grace Church, and welcome to Grace Church Online. My name is Rachel, and I'm your host this week. Can you believe it's December? We are now in our ninth month of meeting in this virtual way. It doesn't just feel like a long time since we last met together in the Chrysalis Theatre. It is a long time, but it's so good that we can meet together like this. If you'd told me 12 months ago, as I prepared to join the staff team at Grace Church, that I would be communicating through homemade videos, I wouldn't have believed you. And this week we've enjoyed more homemade videos as part of our Grace Church Christmas Kindness Adventure Calendar. Hasn't it been great to get those daily messages encouraging us to catch and pass on the kindness of God? If you haven't received any messages, please get in touch and let us know so we can get them to you and encourage you too. Well, I pray that we really get to enjoy God's love as we gather together now, as we draw near to him and praise him for who he is and worship him for what he has done. We'll be sharing communion together in this service. So if you haven't already, you may want to grab some juice and bread or cracker or something to partake in this special time. And Roger Webb will be bringing God's word from Isaiah as part of the series, Our God Saves. And we're going to meet another of Norman's relatives today in our Young at Heart slot. So as we come now to worship, why don't you stand if you're able or kneel before God if you prefer or whatever you do, shut out the distractions and direct your hearts to Father God. Step out of the shadows, come out of the grave, break into the wild and don't be afraid. Run into wide open spaces, graces waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted, graces waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. 
come out of the dark just as you are into the fullness of his love where the spirit is here let there be freedom let there be freedom bring all of your burdens bring all of your scars come back to like the weight has been lifted breathe in while you were created grace is waiting where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is freedom where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is freedom come out of the dark just as you are to the fullness of His love, where the Spirit is there, let there be freedom, let there be freedom. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name, lives made whole. Awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Where the Spirit Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. Where the Spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom. Let there Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. The Spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom, let there be freedom, let there be freedom.
mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy For the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, come to
So sing a little louder. Oh, sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. church we're going to take a few moments now to share communion together let me encourage you to grab some squash or some grape juice and grab some bread as we share this meal together if you're joining in with this service on your own I want you to remember you're part of a church family and we're thinking of you and praying for you and including you as we share this meal together to help us get into communion today I've been thinking about some of the carols we'll be singing over these next few weeks some of our carols are just amazing at proclaiming gospel truth and uh, let me encourage you as we sing these carols over these next weeks use this as an opportunity to really worship and read again some of these words that can be very familiar to us because they speak so often of the story from Christmas from the nativity scene all the way through to the cross and so let me share a couple of Uh, lyrics I found from some well-known carols just to help us into communion. We Three Kings has a line within it that says sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in the stone-cold tomb. Hark the herald angels sing, speaks of God and sinners reconciled. God rest ye merry gentlemen, I love that one, says Jesus Christ our Saviour was born to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. The first Noel speaks of with his blood mankind he hath bought. Silent night is a line that speaks of the dawn of redeeming grace. What about this one I found, the holly and the ivy? I don't know if you know that, that carol, but it speaks of the holly that bears a berry as red as any blood a prickle as sharp as any thorn, and a bark as bitter as any gall. Lastly, I love joy to the world, and joy to the world encourages every heart to prepare him room. Why don't we do that right now, Grace Church, as we share this together. Why don't you go ahead right now and drink of your juice and eat of the bread and as we do that let's pray let's pray Lord I ask that every heart would prepare you room right now today and this Christmas time as well Lord thank you that as we drink of this cup and we eat of this bread we're remembering your blood was shed your skin was pierced you died your body was placed in that tomb But we thank you that that was the dawn of redeeming grace, that you saved sinners through your death and resurrection. 
thank you that God and sinners truly can be reconciled because of all that this meal represents. Lord, we remember and we celebrate and we give thanks. We give thanks today that you died and rose again so that we could be saved, that you could purchase us with your blood. Thank you, God. Bless my church family. Pray for healing. Pray for refreshing. Pray for hope to come. Pray restore our hearts, Lord. Where we're in need of you most, would you come? Thank you. Because of the cross, because of this meal we're sharing right now, your hope and your life can come. We bless you and praise you, Jesus. Amen. when he shared one of his little stories with you. He tells me you rather like hearing what he gets up to at school. He thought you might like to hear what I've been up to at school. Well, you can probably tell. I was chosen to be a wise man in a school nativity play. Daddy said it was typecasting. I made the perfect wise man. I'm naturally wise, you see, but wanting to play the part as well as I possibly could, I went to the library to research the Magi. I learned some incredible facts. Did you know that the wise men didn't actually arrive in Bethlehem when Jesus was a newborn baby? Well, I thought about telling my teacher that I shouldn't be in the stable with the shepherds, but I was afraid I might wipe myself out of the play. Daddy would have been so disappointed. So I chose to keep quiet. <laughs> no, the wise men didn't visit Jesus until well over a year after his birth. But that's not what I want to share with you. It's the gifts the wise men gave to Jesus that fascinated me the most. I discovered that they are more than just random and extremely unusual gifts. They each have a real significance as to who Jesus is and why he came. I'd like to explain, if I may. Let's start with gold. Gold is symbolic of God and used to honour kings. The gift of gold, therefore, proclaimed that Jesus was not just a human child, but also God. God and King. And then frankincense. Not Frankenstein, as Norman says. <laughs> frankincense is a wedding. It's obtained from trees in northern India and Arabia. Historically, it was burned by the high priest when offering sacrifices to God on behalf of the people. The high priest was like a go-between, speaking to God on behalf of the people. So the gift of frankincense points to Jesus being like a sacrifice, a sacrifice for all people. Incredible. And finally, myrrh. Myrrh is also a wedding, it's an aromatic wedding, and it was used to prepare bodies for burial. That seems like an awfully strange gift for a child, but it points to the purpose of Jesus' life. He was born to die, so that others might live. The conclusion of my research leads me to realise that the nativity story is part of a much bigger story. I'm intrigued to discover more. Well, of course, I can't go to the library over Christmas to do more research, so I thought instead I would spend some time with Jesus himself. I'm going to take some moments to sit quietly with him. Hmm. What about you? You could do the same, you know. I think Jesus would like you and me to spend time with him. In fact, I think he came that we might spend time with him to be a friend with him. So, there you are. That's what I wanted to share about my school nativity play. I hope you get to see the nativity play this year. In fact, 
I think you may get to see one this time next week. <laughs> I'm off now. It's been lovely to meet you. I might see you again one day. <laughs> Bye-bye. A few notices now and a very big welcome if you're new to Grace Church Services online. We'd love to say hello and get to know you personally, so do get in touch. There are contact details on the screen and if you go to Grace Church Milton Keynes website, you can look at details there and get in touch through that. As part of our worship, let's take a moment now to think about giving, to search our hearts and seek God. He provides all we need. Is God prompting you to give in a specific way as you consider giving back to him from your finances? There is a button on your screen with options for giving now and there's more information on our website. But seek God on how you can bless others and further his kingdom on earth from all he's given you. Next week, we're starting our Christmas celebrations. We've got lots of festive fun planned for our next two Sunday services. Everything will be online and available throughout the week as usual, but we encourage all who are able to gather next Sunday the 13th of December for our first Christmas service at the usual time of 10.30 a.m. where we'll have the live hosting facility available. And the following Sunday, the 20th of December, keeping with tradition, we're going to meet in the evening. So we encourage you to gather online at 5 p.m. for our evening Christmas service. Both services are going to be a real celebration where we'll enjoy a variety of things like carols, games, quizzes, readings, a nativity, a testimonies and Christmas messages. And both services are an amazing opportunity for each of us to invite our friends, our families, our neighbours, our colleagues to come along to church with us. So why not think about who you could invite to join you at church from the comfort of their own homes? We have some flyers for you to share as one way of inviting people. They're available in digital form and as hard copies. Do let us know if you would like some hard copies and look out for the digi digital invites coming your way via social media and WhatsApp and so on to make it easy to pass them on. Our theme this year is hope. We want to share the message that there is hope. And at the end of this very difficult year, I believe everyone is looking for hope. Let's help them find it. So let's invite all we can to come and discover real hope, the hope that we can be assured of because of Jesus. Well, that's enough from me for now. It's my pleasure to hand over to Roger to unpack some more from the book of Isaiah. Well, good morning, everybody. And uh, wonderful to be able to be preached, to preach to you this morning. Wonderful privilege. I've been asked by the powers that be to round off, as it were, the present session on Isaiah and to lead into Christmas, which is such a great thing. And I'm going to have the privilege of reading from one of the traditional Christmas readings, reading it a bit early, but I'm sure you won't mind. Reading from Isaiah chapter 9. Starting at verse 2, which is verse 1 in the Hebrew version, and reading from the easily superior version, <laughs> known as the ESV. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, for they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult, every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. 
Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for this glorious prophetic word. And we pray, Lord God, that your prophetic word shall dawn again in our hearts. And I, as always, I just pray, Lord God, that this message and my words shall not simply be with words of human wisdom, persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and the power of God. Amen. Amen. Well, wonderful passage. I want to just give you a bit of background. The others before me have sketched out the situation. You know that if you've read much of Kings and Chronicles, there's a just, in a way, a continual procession of good and bad kings. Some very good, some very bad. This is about a king, Ahaz, and he was one of the bad ones. He was a bad king of Judah. In the southern kingdom, southern kingdom Judah, northern kingdom Israel. And he was a bad king. He, he rather tried to imitate Israel. They had already moved way away into all kinds of idolatrous practices. And he, he, he rather envied them and, and he moved in the same direction, unfortunately, even to the point at one moment when he actually sacrificed his son through fire. And uh, so he was pretty bad. At the time of this prophecy, Syria and Israel of all people were attacking Judah and besieging Jerusalem and so incredibly Ahaz appealed to Assyria to come and help him. But God in the meantime, because God is gracious, God sent the prophet Isaiah to try to sort him out and he begins by giving Ahaz a positive word. He, he tells him these attackers are going to fail. They're not going to prevail. But there is a challenge that you have to believe. Actually, it says if you don't stand firm in your faith, you won't stand at all. And that's a challenge for all of us this morning. It's faith or failure. Faith or failure. And... I don't know which Abraham, Ahaz chose. And then God makes an offer to Ahaz, which is an incredible offer, one that you feel he just can't refuse. He says, ask me for a sign. Uh, and it can be unlimited. No limit to the sign you can ask for. Now, I tell you, if God says to us, look, what do you want me to do? What would you like me to do? We would, might, we might think about it, but we would certainly have something, wouldn't we? You know, when Jesus said to Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus knew, and he wanted his sight restored. But amazingly, Ahaz turned down the offer. And he, he turned it down in, in chapter 7. We're in chapter 7, by the way, at the moment. Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Well, that sounds good. He's actually repeating a verse, words from Deuteronomy, words which Jesus used against the enemy. I won't put the Lord to the test, but you can't help feeling that he's not genuine in this. And uh, I, I just feel that he turns the offer down because he actually wants God to help them in general. He wants, them, wants God to help them as a nation, but he doesn't want God probing into his own personal life and situation. That, that, that's, that's the way I see it. 
and we have to we have to be challenged by that don't we you know sometimes we like we like the christian faith in a general sense we love to read the bible we we love to pray pray for other people and for the nation but how do we feel when god really probes our innermost secret being and exposes things which we know would not look good in his sight and i think that we need to we need to ask ourselves that and we need to realize that in order to be fully blessed by god we must surrender everything to god and that's part of what's called repentance which is essential before faith so he gave the good answer but it was wrong for him and god god's response to that is he wasn't amused he said you know is it enough for you to to weary your own people but you weary your god as well but then god because he is gracious he does give a sign he says i'm going to in effect he says i'm going to give a sign anyway not for you personally but I'm going to give a sign which will be for your people and ultimately for all mankind. And that sign is given in verse 14 of chapter 7. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And so we will think about that and we will hear more of that shortly. But meanwhile, in chapter 8, the nation is plunged further and further into chaos. There's a real threat now from Assyria, um, who are a really bloodthirsty army. And, uh, you know, God warns the people that, that the, the Assyrians will come. And gradually the whole nation develops and sinks into chaos. And right at the end of chapter 8 we get a very powerful verse. They will look to the earth, but behold, distress and darkness, the gloom of anguish. And they will be thrust into thick darkness. That's a terrible picture, isn't it? Darkness, the kind of darkness that, that can be felt. Just as when God sent that thick darkness over Egypt at the time of the Exodus. And this lovely word gloom, I don't know, I don't know how it links up with the Hebrew, but it's a lovely English word, gloom. And that's when this kind of darkness of despair begins to seep into our spirits. And it replaces the oil of joy with the spirit of heaviness. And again, we cannot help drawing parallels with the situation across the world and in this nation in these days. The nations are beginning to collapse into a certain level of chaos. And there is darkness. And I'm sure that many people are feeling that spirit of despair rather than the oil of joy. And uh, I just pray right now that you will find joy again that you will find peace that you will find blessing and but then we say we say praise the lord hallelujah because that gloom that darkness can be dispelled 
because there is transformation in chapter 9. Chapter 9 verse 1 begins, but there will be no gloom. And in verse 2, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. The fact is, that the, the wonderful fact is that darkness is always driven out by light. It cannot, they cannot coexist. You know, when Vicky and I visited Canada some years ago to visit her brother, we had a wonderful time in Canada. Flying back, we came from Toronto Airport round about midnight, it seemed like the middle of the night, and we took off into darkness, complete darkness. And we were flying in complete darkness. And I was next to the window, and after a while, I looked out briefly and right across what must have been the horizon there was a very 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 thin band of light golden wonderful golden light like a neon like a luminous light absolutely brilliantly bright just a tiny little pencil of light and a little bit later on I looked out and it was a bit larger and then it was a bit larger still and it gradually filled the window and it gradually filled the whole sky. The whole sky was filled with this glorious sunshine light. And the Bible says the light shines in the darkness. John's Gospel says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness just couldn't handle it. How does that light come? How do, we, how do we see that kind of light? Where do we see that kind of light that tra can transform lives of gloom and despair into joy and delight? Well, here we are. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called. The virgin's child would be born and called Emmanuel, God with us. And later he was named Jesus. And the Hebrew name Yeshua could loosely be rendered Our God Saves. And that's, that's the title for our series, Our God Saves. And that could be rendered for the name of Jesus. And friends, that changes everything. Jesus changes everything. Because we see Jesus the full and complete and ultimate revelation in human form of Almighty God, manifesting his power, his love, his wisdom and his peace. In Colossians, Paul writes, the entire, the entire fullness of God's nature dwells bodily in Christ. So if we ever feel we need help or guidance, Jesus can be our wonderful Saviour. Sorry, our wonderful Counselor. Jesus can be our wonderful Counselor. He's our wonderful Saviour as well, of course. Again, Paul writes, In him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And James writes, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God. What I would say is, let him ask God first, before he tries other counsellors. We sometimes are tempted to go to people before we go to God. And I, I believe fully that we must go first to God 
and seek for him to speak to us on any problems we have. Secondly, if we feel weak and vulnerable, we should remember Paul's positive statement, when I am weak, then I'm strong. How is that? Because Jesus' divine power, the power of mighty God, can be released into our lives. Jesus as everlasting Father is not quite perhaps so easy to grasp. In the Old Testament there's not much mention of God as Father. It's Jesus in the Gospels who encourages us to pray to our Father in heaven and spoke often to his disciples of their heavenly Father. He says, your heavenly Father knows you need all these things. And he talks of returning eventually to my Father and your Father. Just to remind ourselves again, the entire fullness of God's nature dwells bodily in Christ. And that includes every blessing from a perfect Father. If you're feeling unloved, actually you're doubly loved by the, the love of God, our perfect Father, flowing down through Jesus, our Saviour. Finally, to cap it all and bring it all together, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. What a word that is, peace. Shalom, the wonderful shalom of God. Peace of mind. Balance. When we are in stress and turmoil, it gives us balance. Elsewhere in Isaiah it says, You keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you. That's actual double peace. Peace, peace. Wonderful. Also signifies positive blessings of salvation, including health and divine prosperity. And it, but the thing is, it really brings together all the fullness of the blessing of God. And it's all to be found and released through Jesus, who said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. And so, and I just want to pray over anyone who is lacking that peace at the moment. I want to say, peace be with you. The peace of God which passes understanding. So in conclusion then, Emmanuel, God with us. How can we fully grasp the importance of that? How can we get hold of the full glory of this wonderful reality? The reality that says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. How can we adequately describe Jesus? It's hardly possible. I know that I feel inadequate to do that. But through Jesus, history is transformed. The world is transformed. We who believe can be transformed. Emmanuel is a world changer. Jesus is a life changer. And I just say to anyone this morning who has, you haven't yet been prepared to surrender your life to Jesus, I would say, please, do it now. You will not regret it, and it will give you a Christmas that you will never forget. Um, when I was first thinking about preaching way back, one of my mentors was a guy called Don Double, who was a great preacher and evangelist. And he still is, although he doesn't get around so much nowadays. And I always remembered, I mean, Don 
put a lot of teaching. He was a great example in my life for preaching, but he also gave opportunity for me to preach. And so, you know, I so respect his memory. And I remember once he said, when people leave the church after I've preached, when they've heard a sermon, I don't want them to go away saying, what a wonderful sermon. He said, I want them to go away saying, what a wonderful saviour. What a wonderful Jesus. So coming up to Christmas, as we approach this season which can become so distorted in this world, let us please keep our eyes upon him. Keep our eyes upon Jesus. Remember, Jesus is for life, not just for Christmas. So Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for Emmanuel, God with us in human form, Jesus, our Saviour who died for us. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you that we can be joyful and we can celebrate and we can rejoice because of who Jesus is and what he has done. And I ask your blessing now over all who are watching this. I ask you to bless them and keep them, cause your face to shine upon them, be gracious to them. Grant them your favour and give them your peace. Amen. Thank you, Roger, for that great message. I pray that God will continue to speak to each of us through his word as we ponder those thoughts. Well, that's it for our gathering this week. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you find opportunities to connect with each other throughout the week. And I'm looking forward to more encouragements from our Christmas Kindness Adventure calendar. And I hope you enjoy them too. Please stick around if you're uh, here at the 10.30 service and join us on Zoom for our coffee and catch up. Um, and that's it. I'll see you next time. God bless. Have a great week.